this is my story. I have to tell my testimony. And your name is? And I'm Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Lawrence. Okay. And I live in Joplin. And the day that the tornado came was a beautiful day. And I had been to the doctor on Thursday and spent the last of my money getting some bedding plants and stuff to make hanging plants since I can't get down. And all day Friday and Saturday, I did that Sunday. I was just out here and enjoying it and the beauty God has. And the first siren went off and then somebody walked by here that I knew and he told me that I should turn on the TV that there's a tornado warning out. And so I went in to turn the TV on and they said, right as it came on, um, there's a tornado headed to Joplin. It's east of Galena and west of Joplin, but it's headed there to take cover. And the second siren went off. And I still stayed out here trying to reach, I was trying to reach my hanging plants and it just got thinking I was just gonna, they wouldn't blow over. Mm -hmm. And um, I, <laughs> I, then the wind picked up really big, and then sporadically, the hail balls started. They were huge, like... Grapefruits, or... Quite, not quite softball, but certainly almost there. But they were just sporadic. One over this way, one over that way. And they had little whips that looked like threads on the side. And later, they told me some people from the Weather Channel that came to the shelter that uh, that was because it was whipping it as it came down, the wind in circular motions. Mm -hmm. But anyway, then I heard the train sound. And I said to myself, oh my, mm -hmm. it is train sound. So we went in, it took all my might with both my arms to shut the storm door. There's the door. Mm -hmm. and we went in, I shut the door behind me, called her, she jumped in my lap, and we went straight to my bathroom. Mm -hmm. And in the bathroom, I can't go all the way in it or turn in it. I can just go in, you know, mm -hmm. and the door won't close with the chair. But I could feel stuff hitting the back of my head and, you know, the back of the chair and stuff. And I was praying so hard because I was scared. And um, at one point, when we first got in there, I thought I was going to lose her. And I did hear all the windows crack open, but right after that, I felt this almost glowing peace right here just come in me, and it just enveloped my whole body and like it went around us. And I was telling her, don't worry, God's got his hand. The Lord has his hand around us. We're, we're going to be all right. And so while the roof got blown off and the ceiling all came in, I never even heard that because I was holding my hand up, praising God. And I praise him now, too. We were both okay, and I might have lost some things that didn't matter, but I was blessed with people helping me get started back mm -hmm. because I had gone through Katrina also. That's why I had moved back up here. And mm -hmm. but he's blessed me through everything. And of course when I came out this lot which yeah. had a huge brick warehouse like So building, literally gone. this is the tornado path, right? Yes. It it came right through here. Yes. Right? Cuz you, you can, can tell the trees are gone. Oh yeah. That's the hospital, St. John's uh -huh. Hospital, right? That's been on the news. Yes. Cunningham Park is right across the street, right? And, yeah. From St. John's, it's on the uh, on our side of the hospital. We're going to be singing there on Saturday. Are you? Yeah. I'll tell you about that. But so that, so literally right here, this empty lot right here, though, you said was part of, there was a big building there? Yeah, big brick warehouse, like, thing, and another huge tall block warehouse over there across the street and it was totally gone. This empty lot right here where uh -huh, those houses are. Corner. Okay, and they're rebuilding these houses right here. Yeah. In fact, those and that seven one, houses, not the first one, but the other seven are the extreme home makeover Oh, houses. not the first 
that that one, the, the gray wall, but the ones next to it, yeah. all those? All okay. those on that side of the street, there's seven of them. Okay, and that's the ones they did every week, right? Yeah, or they did one in a week or... They or, did seven or, in well, a week. Seven in a week, mm -hmm. and that's all. Yeah, and the mini houses started back, as you can see. Uh-huh. But it was just horrifying. And Greenbrier, a little rest home, was back there behind where you see this. And they going up uh -huh. over there. Uh -huh. And... And your house is literally right here and fine. Yeah. You just lost your roof. They replaced it. Yeah. Wow. The ceiling. They had to replace everything inside. You know, all the electric, the ducting, everything. And they replaced your windows for you. Uh huh. Okay. Because I rent from the city. Oh, okay. So and this the, is a rental. The rest of them here. Mm -hmm. Even Kay and the other ones, they lost their windows and some shingles, mm -hmm. but mine was the worst. It was, oh, and it took my tree in the backyard. That's one of the, the, one of the things I noticed. It, there's a ton of magnolia trees all over the city, and yet right here, there's nothing left. They took all those big trees down, right? Well, what was left of them, they yeah. did. If they hadn't taken them off, you should have seen them. The bark was taken off off the trees. Uh -huh. They were just standing, the ones that you can probably see as you drive, but I don't know, they may have had them already cut them down. Okay. Because I, I don't get out much. The only time I ever leave is hospital or doctor. Okay. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing your story with oh, us today. Thank you for being here, and I love telling it. I told, <laughs> I told the HUD people. HUD they came HUD. down and met the director of the city who owns these uh -huh. properties. I had to stay at the shelter, the Red Cross shelter on the Missouri Southern so for three campus weeks. Campus for three weeks? And that was hard. But uh, when Matt came, he asked me, do you mind? He said, some of the HUD people are down here and the FEMA people, and I told him about you because you've been through Katrina, <laughs> and they want to come with me as I give you the key to the little apartment, the oh. little two-room apartment at Murphy Manor. It's a for the elderly, really, uh -huh. and it's like a six-story building, and I stayed there from the third week in June until the, after two full weeks in November, and that's when I finally I got back out. in your house. All right.